I'm Ashton Addison from EventChain for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Alejandro Gutierrez, the COO and co founder of DeFactor. Alejandro, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here. Oh, thanks for the invite, Ashton. I'm really happy to, to be here. Yeah, likewise, I'm excited to dive into DeFactor and the real world assets and providing liquidity, driving DeFi into the real world. Uh, it's a really interesting initiative that your team is working on. I would love for you to kick it off for us with just a high level overview of DeFactor and then we can dive into the details. Definitely. So DeFactor uh, was conceptualized right as um, an easy to use uh, platform uh, that would allow um, Azurinators or real world Azurinators to tap into the DeFi world and provide all the tools and services uh, that a um, normal company, a normal financial company uh, will require to keep operating or keep transacting the way that they are already uh, used to it, right? Mm -hmm. As you know, like a uh, DeFi space is fairly new and there are a lot of um, uh, um, components that need to be improved from the, from the usability point of view. Uh, and from the uh, from the uh, operational point of view, in order to uh, scale the use of DeFi into the real world, and that's exactly what we are focusing in in DeFactor. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and I think that's a great initiative. And there's so many different real world assets that you could be uh, introducing and putting in decentralized finance, integrating it into uh, the digital world which is really exciting. Maybe you can drill down a little deeper and more specific on where your team is starting and what were some of the problems that you saw with these real world assets that you were looking to solve with the DeFi solutions? Correct. So, um, I think, I think it would be good to, to uh, provide, the uh, the audience with, with understand that we have been in this space for the last 18 months. We have been one of the first, uh, companies, uh, uh, not the factor per se, but console freight. That is the first Azurinator that will be integrated into the factor. Uh, so we have been um, the longest uh, uh, Azurinator standing uh, for for Centrifuge. Mm -hmm. um, we have been there. Yeah, we started like almost uh, a year ago. With them, have uh, funded more than five million dollars in in real world assets and funded around four hundred and fifty different assets in this in this tenure. So with our experience in console freight, right, we're saying, look, this is fantastic and it's, it's a, a real opportunity to find an alternative source of liquidity, right? It's not just going to banks and traditional uh, institutions. Like a, this is actually something that we can use to, to create um, alternatives for, for SMEs, uh, uh, and, and, not even, and not just for SMEs, but companies that, that cannot find uh, uh, traditional fin uh, uh, financing, sorry. So when we're starting just in this process, we're starting to see like, a look, definitely there is, there is an opportunity here, but in order to scale this and make it happen, uh, there is a huge gap, right? And that's what we're saying, like we need to just start bridging that gap. Um, how tools like, uh, for example, if you are a traditional financial company, uh, the fact that you're going to be transacting uh, in crypto, uh, but you need to just provide fiat to your to your customers. So like uh, that on ramp on, uh, on ramp off ramp is, is tedious. If you are not used to manage wallets and and so on, uh, you need to do that exchange. Then there's going to be components uh, on the on the accountability uh, side as well. That uh, if you are not or you have not been involved with it, it's going to be just tricky just to. Uh, uh, plug it into into your into your traditional operations right mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of the the, the the what we are solving also providing visibility to the investors for, because at the moment investors are putting money into this into these liquidity pools but they don't really have a huge visibility of what are the assets that, have, that are behind they know the companies that are using the funds uh, and how they're mitigating risk however there's no much more uh, from the from the real assets that are there, so that's that's another component that we're trying to help and the onboarding into liquidity pools because that's a real bottleneck at the moment. So going into real world assets, um, we well we have been doing um, uh, invoices like a factory invoices, 
Uh, also, we have a lot of experience in, in the trade finance space. That is what Consofer has been doing and inventory finance, right? So mm -hmm. those three assets uh, or asset classes are the ones that we're going to be uh, starting with. And from there, we're going to be expanding to a multiple like, like real estate that we are just um, doing some, some assessments, some due diligence on, on projects, uh, to lending uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. Definitely very exciting. And we were talking before about how your team is decentralized and you know this could be a global platform and i'm curious is your team starting in specific jurisdictions uh for where the real world assets are located and does that make a difference uh maybe on the regulatory side uh, in where this is best implemented first then look from our side we, we are agnostic from the asset classes we definitely need to have a structure just to be able to onboard these other classes uh, from the regulatory side, as we are a middleware, uh, in a way, the, the companies that are providing the service are the asserinators, no realistic of ourselves, right? However, we need to just be aware of those regulations and uh, what are the potential uh, issues that can bring uh, to provide these these uh, services into asserinators if they are not regulated and uh, some sort of compliance is required from the... From the, from the a regulatory point of view, right? So, mm -hmm. look, we are pretty familiar with the Americas, uh, Europe, um, and our nation coming, uh, or for example, in trade finance space, a cargo that is coming from from China, that is uh, mainly where most of the of the goods are produced in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And for those companies that have these real world assets, you mentioned. Uh, you know, we're trying to get them into the decentralized finance world. A lot of them that are in uh, older industries that don't have a lot of technology are completely unfamiliar with, with DeFi. Uh, you mentioned you're partnering with Centrifuge, um, which a lot of people probably aren't familiar with, and other liquidity pools. C could you talk a little bit more about, you know, what does that partnership mean? How does that help uh, those companies that have the real world assets? You know, so you, they have their assets and, and how specifically are you partnering and bringing that liquidity for them? Definitely. So from the from the um, liquidity point of view, as, as you mentioned, uh, we have a partner with, with Centrifuge. Centrifuge is one of the first um, protocols out there, or we call it uh, ecosystem. The protocol is called Tin Lake. And, and what they do is they have set up a whole structure uh, that allows investors to put money into into these uh, liquidity pools, right? And the Azurinator, what it does is just takes uh, an asset, tokenize that asset, right? And that asset is going to be just locked into the pool in order to be able to just uh, withdraw funds, right? Mm -hmm. All that is is really set up, uh, is really well structured by by Centrifuge. But then the problem is when the Azurinator is taking that money, right, and is going to be fulfilling their operation with those funds. That's when we kicked in, right? That's when we are developing all these different tools. And we're going to be just de developing um, all the all the required um, uh, a structure, right? So in that case, Azurinators can plug into that DeFi pipe and also assess the risk of transactions and so on. So that, that's kind of from the from the uh, extraction of funds. Now, from the Azurinator point of view, look, at the moment, there is a huge need for financing around the world. A reason behind is because uh, traditional um, sources of liquidity, uh, they have been kind of put on hold in a way due to 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 the pandemic right and the and the economic climate so let's go just a, a, an example for from the trade finance point of view uh, pre-covid there was a 1.6 trillion dollars gap uh, meaning that uh, people that had applied for these services and they didn't get it for x or y reason the the studies are suggesting that post-covid uh, this gap is going to be between five or six trillion dollars. Wow. Which meaning that the, the need, right, for these alternative sources of financing are going to be there. And um, the, the incentive for these companies to adopt 
uh, DeFi is going to be huge, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, most of these uh, traditional or traditional uh, asset uh, asserinators, uh, they need the liquidity in order to grow, in order to just provide more competitive uh, rates and so on. So the incentive is there is is now for us to just make it easy enough for them to be tapping into the DeFi space. Totally. And I was just going to ask you about the incentives, uh, because obviously they're they're going to need that liquidity. And with that huge gap post COVID that that your team has analyzed, uh, obviously, that's a huge incentive to drive more liquidity through the DeFi uh, platforms. Uh, do you see just because th these companies are going to need liquidity, there'll be a lot of organic adoption? Uh, or are you also going to be marketing into different industries to, to, to show them that these solutions exist? Or do you think it'll be a combination of both? Definitely. I think it's going to be a combination of, of, of both. Uh, we're going to put a lot of effort from the marketing side and sales side because our idea is to just spread the word and uh, you sell uh, traditional actors that DeFi is there and that DeFi is a, is a real uh, opportunity and a real uh, solution mm -hmm. to mitigate those issues with, with liquidity. Uh, the, for our experience, what happened a lot of in, in, the, in the financial market is that the word of mouth is pretty important. And uh, for example, your onboarding, uh, let's say um, factoring services like invoice and factoring mm -hmm. services pretty quick a lot of those guys will say where are you taking your liquidity from i say like from DeFi. oh okay can i get an introduction so mm -hmm. th that happens a lot right um uh, which which is is good help us as well to just drive that that adoption um and yeah we're putting a whole strategic plan in which the one we're educating people because we believe that uh, part of the journey is, is educating people about DeFi. So, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions about DeFi and there's a lot of fear in a way, like uh, people don't know, or, like uh, do you guys do KYC, do you guys do anti-money laundering? Where is this money coming from? And it's just kind of educating people, look, this is as structural as, as, as your traditional financing, uh, mm -hmm. but the difference is there is no uh, kind of a centralized entity there that is defining if you're getting funds or not in a way. So just kind of explain educating people into in, in this whole new journey. Mm -hmm. And on top of the incentive for just liquidity, there's also the factor token in DeFactor that I'm guessing is also used within the liquidity pools and has utility within the ecosystem. And I'd love for you to touch on the factor tokens utility, specifically how it functions within the liquidity pools and just how does it benefit the companies that are driving DeFi into their real world assets? definition so from the like the the the, the pools because because the pools in the beginning are going to be based outside the de facto ecosystem they are going to be used as i say we're going to be using the existing technology from from companies like like centrifuge so all those all those uh, pools are actually uh, on on stable coin mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and centrifuge case is is die and that's what the investors are using however uh, there are from the from the fundamental use or, or, or fundamental value of, of the of the factor token. So we have four components, right? One is transaction fees. The second one is the staking component, collateral, and finally governance. So I will uh, give you a bit of uh, brief on what they are. So from the transactions fees, what happens like every single asserinator uh, are required to obtain. A factor tokens to, in order to access the platform, right? And uh, the asserinators will be paying proportionally based on the funds uh, that they are using, right? So the more funds they are using, well, you have to just contribute uh, a bit uh, for into the platform with, with factor tokens. So that's kind of the, the main uh, source of fundamental demand, right? And this means that the factor token will be accruing value in the direct correlation uh, to increase activity uh, within the ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. and the idea behind is that this provides uh, a circular economy that is, at the end of the day, the most desirable um, outcome for a platform like ours, right? Mm -hmm. Then from the staking point of view, so 
if you are not a serenader but you want to be part of the platform uh, and you want to just support the, the, the token price so what we're doing is like a, a, allowing uh, retail investors to participate right and, and get some benefits when they are staking these, these tokens um, and that will allow us just as i say engage to a wider community not just as serenaders uh, from the collateral point of view so basically is the azurinators that are posting collateral they will be eligible to just reduce interest rates and have some more perks right because they're over collateralizing the 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 transactions and when the transactions are repaid uh, the tokens will be used to actually incentivize good actors and kind of penalize actors that are not performing so if you bring but you brought an asset into the ecosystem that asset didn't uh, perform well which means that maybe some of those tokens are going to be just taken away as part of the penalization that you will be in as a, or you will be getting as an asset originator or the way around you brought a good uh, asset it went really well you're going to be just provided with with some with some rewards and the governance is just fairly straight right like you hold factor tokens you will be able to take part in, in, in the decisions of the community, provide some guidance on, on, on how you believe that the, the ecosystem needs to be, um, oh, yeah, how, how it's moving forward, uh, issue proposals, voting on various factors, and uh, just provide that sense of community, right, to, to mm -hmm. the whole ecosystem. Definitely, thanks for that. And I saw on your site that you did already have successful seed rounds. So congratulations on that so far. And looking forward, I'd love to hear, you know, what is the roadmap for the next uh, couple months in the major milestones that are needed for, for the token and for the whole platform? Yeah, thank you very much for that. And yeah, we, we are uh, in, in our token sale. It's doing really well. The uh, reception has been fantastic. So yeah, we're, we're really glad. And uh, also we really thank for to everybody that has um, been supporting us. Look, from the milestones, right, the things that we need to just develop in the next month. So we're working really hard. Well, one is, is just closing actually our, our um, um, like sale, right? We mm -hmm. haven't finished that. So that's, that's a really uh, important component. We are uh, working extremely hard actually defining um, uh, like, like the governance piece because we believe that our community is one of the most important components and we want to just devote a lot of time and effort into it. So we are just working on developing all that side, the staking, voting is pretty important. That's one of the things that are going to be just working fairly soon. The other components that we are working in is just, say, finalizing integrations with, with Centrifuge, doing the first onboarding of Azurinators that is, the, as we mentioned, sent, uh, console freight will be that first uh, um, accelerator. And the idea would be just to have at least two or three uh, at the end of the year fully onboarded and fully transacting in, in the factor. So you see, like, uh, we, because because we're already uh, transacting, some of these accelerators are already transacting. So for us, is it would be easy just to start uh, moving forward uh in a in a faster way in a faster manner right like a, mm -hmm. the idea is just to prove that the the platform um is operationally pretty soon and that will as well attract people to be holding the token that at the end of the day is, mm -hmm. is one of the key components out of the project definitely well best of luck uh with those milestones i will be watching along to see how it goes uh for the viewers that are looking to follow along and learn more about the, the staking and the ecosystem and the updates as they come out. What's the best way for viewers to get involved with the DeFactor community? Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, one is our webpage, uh, DeFactor.com. Uh, I will invite everybody just to follow us on on Twitter. Uh, also, join our channel in in Telegram, uh, that where we are uh, really active. Uh, and if you're a little bit more um, traditional, I would say, uh, also we have a presence in LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. I would suggest uh, people to just take a look on every single one of those platforms. Sounds great, Alejandro. I will leave all of those links in the description box below as well. All the best with DeFactor moving forward and let's follow up in the near future.
Awesome. Thank you very much for inviting Ashton and uh, really happy to be here.